Greetings, 105 students. This is Ryan here to tell you what you'll be doing in the molar mass of an unknown acid experiment. As you may have guessed from its title, the goal of this experiment is to determine the molar mass of an unknown acid. The technique you'll use to do this is the titration, more specifically an acid-base titration. In this technique, you will start out with a solution of acid in an Erlenmeyer flask. You will then add sodium hydroxide solution to the acid by burette, and you will keep adding it until all of the acid has reacted with the sodium hydroxide. In your calculations, you will take the moles of sodium hydroxide you added, use the reaction stoichiometry to convert to moles acid, then take the grams of acid that were present and divide by moles to get the acid's molar mass. Granted, the actual calculations will be a little more involved than just that, but this should give you an overall idea how you can use this technique to get an acid's molar mass. Before you can use your sodium hydroxide to analyze an acid, you have to determine its concentration. From a procedure standpoint, the way you'll do this is near identical to how you'll analyze your unknown acid. First, you'll make a solution of oxalic acid by putting some solid oxalic acid into a weighing bottle, taking the mass of the bottle with the acid inside, dispensing it into a beaker, and reweighing your bottle. In your post lab, you can use the two bottle masses to calculate how much acid you've used. You'll then dissolve the acid in some water. For the amount of water, you want to use roughly half of whatever your volumetric flask volume is, or maybe a little less. After the acid is dissolved, pour it into your volumetric flask, then rinse the beaker out with a little water and pour this rinse water into the flask. Next, use more DI water to fill the flask to its index mark, which is this frosted band around its neck. Be careful when you do this, the level rises quickly when the liquid gets up into the neck. And finally, invert the flask about 20 to 30 times to thoroughly mix the contents. Next, you will prep your Erlenmeyer flasks with some of the acid solution you just made. Do this by pipetting one aliquot, that's a fancy term for one pipette's worth, one aliquot of acid into each flask. In case you're unfamiliar with the volumetric pipette, here's a couple of tips for using one. To fill it, use your pump to slowly draw the liquid up to a point just past the index mark on the pipette. Then remove the pump and cover the top with your thumb or finger. Finish filling it by letting the liquid level drain until the meniscus is aligned with the pipette's index mark. When you go to dispense the liquid into your flasks, just let it gravity drain. A little bit of the liquid will stay behind in the tip. This is normal, and the pipette is calibrated for it. It's also the reason why you don't want to blow the pipette out with your pump. Finish setting your flasks up by adding 20 to 30 mils of DI water to each one, and one or two drops of phenolphthalein indicator. For the titration itself, you will use a burette to add sodium hydroxide solution to the flasks until you reach the titration's endpoint, which in this case is when it turns a very faint magenta or pinkish color. In case you're unfamiliar with the burette, here's some things to help you use one. To set one of these up, you first rinse it with the solution you are going to dispense out of it, in this case sodium hydroxide. You then fill it past the 0.00 mil mark and drain a little bit of the fluid out, enough to get the fluid below the 0.00 mil mark. There are two reasons for doing this. One is it gets all the air out of the spout at the bottom. The other reason has to do with how the burettes are read. Since the actual physical markings on a burette are in tenths of a mil, you have to interpolate between them to read in hundredths of a mil. To show you how to do this, let's look at a close-up image of the meniscus in a burette. The bottom of the meniscus here comes down to a point between the 16.1 mil and 16.2 mil marks. And if we use our imagination to divide the space between the markings into 10 segments, you can see it lines up best with the 16.16 marking. So we would record this as 16.16 mil. Of course, when you go to do this yourself, you won't have any thin lines to help you out like the ones in this example, which does make it a little harder to figure out what that last digit is. Just estimate it as best you can, and don't worry too much whether your estimate is a little high or a little low. With some practice, you'll get good at this in no time. Now let's come back to the other reason why you want to drain the fluid below the 0.00 mil mark and not to it. The second reason is because it is hard, and time consuming, to get the meniscus down to exactly 0.00, to the point that, for all intents and purposes, it doesn't happen. So, if you are truly reading the meniscus properly, you won't have any 0.00 mil readings. To determine how much liquid you dispense from your burette, you will first take an initial reading before you dispense anything. Once you reach your titration's endpoint, you will then take a final reading. You then calculate how much solution you dispensed by subtracting the initial reading from the final. 
One more thing. Your titration's endpoint will be a very pale magenta color that is just visible against a white background. If you add too much sodium hydroxide, you may overshoot, and your solution will look like this, with a prominent, obvious color. Unfortunately, if you are very close to the endpoint, even adding just one full drop can cause it to overshoot. To avoid this, you will probably have to add the last little bit of titrant by slowly opening the valve until a half drop forms on the tip. To get this half drop into your flask, you can either touch it to the flask's inside and use a wash bottle to wash it down, or use your wash bottle to spray it off. Titrations can be slow, but there is one thing you can do to make this experiment go a little bit quicker. Don't try and be super careful with the first flask you titrate. Do it quickly just to give yourself a rough idea how much titrant you'll need. Once you know that, on the subsequent flasks you can crank the burette valve wide open to bring them close to the endpoint, and then go slowly and carefully from there. You'll prepare and titrate your unknown acid solution the same way you titrated the oxalic acid solution. In your post lab, you'll use the data from these titrations to identify the unknown. When you are done, dispense of all solutions in the waste container in the hood and rinse your glassware with DI water. After you have rinsed the burette out, leave it with its valve open.